Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, and I'm your host, Coach Evans. Today, we're going to talk about my boy, a.k.a. Jose's secret weapon, Charlie Jones, <laughs> number 15 for Purdue. Um, 154 targets, 110 catches, which I think led the nation. I think he led the nation in catches. 71.4% catch rate, 1,360, 61 yards, uh, 12 TDs. He had three drops all year. Well, it's 52.4 uh, percentage in contested catches. He's 5'11", 175, and ran a 4'4", 3 at the NFL Combine in um, whenever it was, February, March, whenever. Let's get into the film. Charlie Jones, people. Now, I always want to say Charlie Murphy, but I keep saying Charlie Jones. But his name, Charlie Jones. <laughs> Let's get into this Charlie Jones film. If this is your first time here, like the video. Hit the subscribe button. And also hit that bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the rest of the 2023 draft season. The draft is fastly approaching us. And you don't want to be here to miss the content that's coming up soon. Now on to the film. Charlie up that up top versus uh, Joy Porter Jr. Gets him, you know, with a good release. Kind of squares him up with his foot fire. Porter takes a back step, a back step, and and Charlie catches him right with that right foot in the air. Pushes up the field, get him, gets him to open up. He's already in the window. It's a good job of separation by Jones right there. Now you will see him outside a lot, but. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, in my mind, his true position is a slot guy. And you'll see later on in the film why I think he's just a slot guy, not an outside guy. But I'll go ahead and tell you. As the game went on, Porter and this other corner down at the bottom start getting the best of him on, at outside. Because, you know, as far as just straight up running past people and being a big guy, he wasn't that guy. And, you know, Porter's a damn good corner, and the other guy played him pretty solid too. But... You're going to see Trace throughout this film that lets you know that in short area spaces and he can work the middle of the field versus uh, linebackers or nickel corners or or even uh, safeties, he's going to get him hell. But Nish, like this, this is a good slant versus um, Porter. And you'll see, this, I think it's this next play where he gets no separation. His hand's just so damn good. Watch this run the drag wrap. No separation. Balls in the air. Porter explodes past him. Explodes past him to get to it. But his hand's just so darn good that he catches it anyway. So good, his hand, he just catches it anyway. You see the full thing. Porter's on his hip, sees the ball, accelerates, gets in front of it. But Jones' hand's just, <laughs> it's not going to catch. I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, he might have led the country in catch with, 100, with 110. I think he might have had the most catches in the country this year. Third play. But you block. And in this instance, no. He was kind of real soft right there versus Porter. Porter didn't do much to to get off that block. He set the edge. And Jones ain't really, you know, do much to try to keep the edge. In that case, I'm you know, disappointed in his blocking on there. Y'all know how much I like for guys to block. And in that case, Porter just manhandled him. At the top again. They tried to run a little they run a little cat blitz and try to replace the corner with the safety. Now this is, they're going to try to spin this thing. I'm, let, me, let me show you what they're going to try to do. They're, they're going to have the cat blitz coming off the edge. He's going to take it. So if they try to throw it right now, then he's going to get over the top to help just in case something happens. The thing is, Porter's going to see this last guy, this guy here. Not Porter, I'm sorry. Charlie's going to see this last guy at the last minute, keep his composure, and still catch this ball. Because this potentially could have been one of those hits. One of those I see you later hits. You see the corner coming down takes a terrible angle. So Jones is able to get behind him. And he elevates high points with a guy right there ready to come down and clean his whistle. He holds on to the ball. Braces himself because he still thinks he's going to get hit. But the DB misses. And thankfully he did. But still, he he, he alligator on it and try to short on it and protect himself early. He went and got the ball first. 
then try to protect himself, which I respect. I respect him for it because that's – it's one thing for us to sit back and talk about, man, you got to catch that and take the lick. That's another thing to take that damn lick. That's another thing to take that lick. And when the people talk about hearing footsteps coming, yes, you do. And you have a general approximation of how close those footsteps are and who that is is about to – because you know how vulnerable you are when you go up like that. All your ribs open, all your, your, your chest plate open, or they can go up under you. So, you know, salute, Charlie, for going to get that. Now we've got him at the bottom of your screen. And not bad release. Not a bad release. He know he's working inside. Give him the outside jab. Give him to open up that way to give him more room. And then shoots right up the middle. Not right up the middle, but right up the numbers. Good job by the quarterback. The ball's released now. Before soon as Charlie, the ball's coming out. Charlie sits down. Right at, right in his break. So that's perfect by him and the quarterback as far as timing. As soon as he stops, ball's right there. Good job of getting his head around, find the ball. Because you see, snap that head around. His head's all the way around looking for the ball. The rest of his body hadn't caught up yet. Your head got to get around to find the ball, and the rest of your body will come to it. Hands catch, make the tackle. So that's good timing by him and the QB. Outside again, the bottom. Now, I talked about his blocking earlier. This time, it was a lot better effort. A lot better effort blocking right there. And blocking is, is effort. You hear me say that all throughout draft season. Blocking, guys, is, is effort, then it's technique. But mostly, it's effort. Mostly, it's effort. And he puts up a lot better effort versus this dude than he did versus Porter Jr. early in the game. Got back at the top. Now, this is the type of stuff that I know he can win in the slot. And even though he's doing this from the outside, imagine him doing it from right here and how much more effective he'll be. But still, he's effective from the outside, so I'm going to take, take nothing away from him. Just under control, working in the middle of the field. Now, this is what I like. So you're in the middle of the field. What you going to do once you get it? What kind of yak ability do you have? And granted, he get tackled, but still. Working, working across the middle of the field, a lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of your diva guys want to work out here and out here. A lot of your diva guys don't want none of this action in the middle of the field. Not saying he's a diva. I'm just, you know, just talking. Now they got a little press coverage right there. Can he get off of it? Nope. But look at the catch. That's what I'm saying. Working outside, he, he's, he was struggling a little bit trying to get off press. But his hands just so good. <laughs> like he he's not open at all. Porter's all over him. All over him. Just A level hands though. A <laughs> level hands. Somebody just donated while I'm recording this. Appreciate it, whoever that is. Appreciate it. I'll shout you out once I finish recording. <laughs> Top of your screen, run the deep over. Just running the back of the end zone. Toe drag swag. Matter of fact, he gets two feet down, not just one. He gets both feet down. If I can stop it when I want to. Right there. One, two, boom. Working the back of the end zone. Again, 5'11", I think. Let me see. Yeah, 5'11", 175. So he's bigger than Tank Dale. This is this is not versus Porter. This is the stuff across the middle of the field. And because he ran so many in cuts later on in the game, they was able to set this up. Boom. Now, that, that sluggo don't look the smoothest. It don't look the greatest, but it's effective. But, I mean, what I think I'm looking at is a version of Hunter Renfro. And the funny thing is I, I did the J, J. Mark Gibbs video for um, most of the tally earlier today. And I was saying that he looked like Alvin Kamara. And then I went to the NFL Network to get his height, weight, and speed. And their comp was Alvin Kamara, which is crazy to me. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say they come for this guy's Renfro. And I'm going to go ahead and check it, you know, after I finish recording this video. Bottom again. We got two more plays. This one and one more. Mm, look at the hands. Good throw, too. Good dot by the quarterback. With all that traffic. Whiff. Those hands went by. Look at that. Hands catch. Hands, all hands, eyes up there. 
eyes up there. And you can't switch your eyes. That's why I use terrible. So you can't switch your eyes. The longer you can stay focused on the ball with your eyes, you can catch anything. You just got your eyes and concentration. That's what you catch with. Boom. In that spot, bracing himself for the lick, takes it, and gets another yard or two. Slot dude. That's slot dude abilities right there. Slot dude traits, I mean. And lastly, your little, it ain't press, man, but it's tight up on him. It just look how he worked in the middle of the field. Look how he work inside. And I'm, I'm going to flatten back out to get you to think I'm going vertical. Stick that foot in the ground, and I'm going to cut it off. Look at the separation he got. That's new ones. Right. He's super wide open. Versus a, a guy that he couldn't get away from early in the game doing verticals and deep routes. Couldn't get away from him. But running these end cuts and, and uh, slants and stuff in the middle of the field was breaking him off. Which lets me know, or further tells me, that he's a slot guy. And that's my spiel on Charlie Jones. Uh, I appreciate you guys for coming through. If you could do me a favor, if you have not done so, like the video. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And as I was recording, Darian Williamson subscribed, so I appreciate you, Darian. And hit that bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the 2023 draft season. It's on its way. It's less than a month away. Get ready. Hot and heavy in April. See you later. Peace.